Good morning, everybody. We are back from our European adventure. Crazy. Yes, we've been home for about a week, so finally recovered from all the jet lag. Unpacked, Unpacked. mostly. There's yes. still lots of laundry to do, but yes. dug through and we were able to like pull together all the things that we brought home from the trip. Yes. So that's one of the things we're doing today. Basically a trip review and then a haul. Indeed. So jumping right into it for the trip review, we'll kind of go location by location, talk about things that we thought went well, things that we would do differently next time, etc. So first off is Disneyland Paris and kind of Paris as a whole. France. France Our time in France. So Disneyland Paris compared to at least Walt Disney World, very different. We knew there were going to be culture shocks walking into the situation. We knew it, but there were a few things that surprised us, yes. namely the smoking all over. There were designated smoking areas, but a lot of people just completely disregarded that. And we only saw one cast member correct someone for smoking in a line. For doing anything, really. Yeah. The cast members there were a lot more lax with the rules compared to the cast members that we are used to seeing in Walt Disney World. So that was kind of the main culture shock for Disneyland Paris proper. Um, the resort, too, would not stay at, well, would but would not stay at Newport Bay again. I would stay at Newport Bay, but I would go somewhere else first, if that makes sense. Yes. It wouldn't be my first pick to go back to, because I would love to go back to Disneyland Paris. Mm -hmm. I thought it was beautiful. I loved the rides. It was so nice to have similar but different things than what we have here in the U.S. The shows were fantastic. Yes. I sure. think it's like worth the price of admission just to go see their shows that they have at Disneyland Paris, for real. The food, we were basically told that it wasn't going to be great, but for the most part, we had pretty darn good food too. I do think the quick service was not as good as the quick service in Walt Disney World. Yeah. But I think the snacks in Disneyland Paris are better than the, than the quick service in Disneyland Paris. So get yeah. snacks, don't get snacks. the quick service. And then I would eat at Pim again yes. in a heartbeat. Pim was great, would probably skip downtown, um, but would definitely go back to Pim. Um, what else? I mean, it, we would definitely go back. We just, Newport Bay, we saw from somebody else that they stayed around the same time that we did and they were told that the AC was not working and they were given a fan. Because we had some issues with the we knew that the hotel had air conditioning. We're silly Americans and we're used to it. So we picked, one of the reasons we picked Newport Bay was because of the level of amenities. Yes. So for the price and with the amenities, that was how we landed on Newport Bay. And the theming, because the, the rooms at the Marvel Hotel didn't seem as Disney theme compared to right. Newport Bay Club. But the, that person was given a fan, and but they were club level, and we were just regular people. So I, that was a little disappointing to hear, because, and we did totally fine. We yeah. survived. We didn't melt. We didn't freeze. We were fine. But when we walked in the door expecting air conditioning, it was a shocker that nothing was available, basically. Yes. It was set on 19 degrees Celsius in heat, I think, mm -hmm. in our room. And you called, they said that they would work on it remotely, and there was no change. Yeah. So, you win, you lose, but overall, really loved our time in Disneyland Paris. Would not get the photo package again. Yes, that was kind of the biggest letdown, was photo pass at Disneyland Paris. It's not worth the price. No. I think it was, I think we paid 75 euro. I think it's a little bit more expensive if you, if you don't get it ahead of time or don't get it with the room. Um, but. We could not find could, photo pass photographers. Yeah. That was the thing. We couldn't find them. We were looking in front of the castle. We were looking around and some of the characters had them and some did not. Yes. And the lines for the characters were 
incredibly long. So the bulk of our photo pass pictures that we got were on rides. Mm -hmm. We also had one picture that we could not have because somebody made an inappropriate gesture towards the camera. And then in one gesture, the camera placement, I am just completely Mike wazowski by somebody else's head on Big Thunder Mountain. That seemed to be the theme with a lot of the ride photos though, is... You need to be tall yeah, to be front. seen on Disneyland Paris ride photo pass pictures. The like, you have to be tall. The cameras are not placed in a way that everybody's face is shown. No. So, really have to be strategic with how you are sitting during the ride picture. As a group of two, we were put in the back of Pirates every single, every time. single time because the boat slightly goes in, so it's smaller. Fine. But then we were trying to take pictures and we were going, yeah, in every picture. And it's very funny knowing what we know. You didn't know until I told you that. But yeah, that's, I mean, I would go to Disneyland Paris again. I would stay at Newport Bay if I didn't expect air conditioning. I would pick somewhere else next time. Mm -hmm. And I would not bother with the photo package. Yeah. Those are kind of... The biggest and, takeaways. And the understand that people are going to smoke in the parks. That's, the, that's Paris for us. Yeah. We spent the day in Paris proper. We had a nice time. It was felt a lot like New York. It was beautiful, but very like busy traffic everywhere. Lots. It was, it felt like a big city. Yeah. So, and a lot of it might've been because they were prepping for the Olympics. For the Olympics. So there's a lot of stuff that's shut down and they're building stadiums all over the place. So there is that to take into account, but it was still just a big city and felt like a big city with some pretty architecture. I'm glad we went. I'm glad we saw what we saw, but I think if we went to Paris again, we probably would go to Disneyland Paris and it would be, I don't think Paris would be a destination for us. I think Paris would be a stop along the way yeah. to pop back to Disneyland Paris. Maybe once they're further along with their expansion, since Disney Studios is in the middle of a crazy redo. redo. Yes. So. Basically, that's Paris. Yeah. Would you do more days in Disneyland Paris than we did? So we did a full day in each park and then like two half days in Disneyland Park. I think it would fully depend on the re-theme. True. And how long it took to get through those rides. Because as it was, we were able to do pretty much everything that we wanted to do. We didn't do Dumbo. We didn't do their... We didn't do a lot of the stuff that's exactly the same right. as it is in the U.S. parks. Those were the priorities for the skip. Yeah. But we wanted, we did everything unique that we wanted to do. We rode Pirates... Several times. Probably four or five times. Phantom Manor a couple times. Yeah. So. But we were able to do all the things we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I feel like one full day per park, for sure with an extra bit for Disneyland Paris is about right. If you want to kind of do all or most of the things. The, we did not have the, their version of Fast Pass though. Yes, we did not pay for that. So you might be able to get around faster if you had that. Because there were some times that we were waiting in lines, but it, we were used to that. But then we flew to Barcelona. Yes. So Barcelona slash Adventures by Disney mm -hmm. was fantastic. Yes. And probably our favorite part of the entire trip. It was definitely a highlight. We were, it was really hectic getting out of Paris. Yes. With the train signs being unclear. We got to the airport, but then our flight was delayed and delayed and everything was just kind of a, a little baggage issue. Yeah, everything was crazy and it was super busy. The airport itself was our least favorite airport, the Paris airport. Yeah. But once we got on the plane, you got a text from one of the adventure guides basically saying, we're tracking you guys. It's going to be okay. And then the world was okay. Yeah. They, so from that moment on, yes. everything was fantastic. They took great care of us the whole time. 
we just basically got to see the highlights of Barcelona. I know we didn't get to see everything in Barcelona. They kept us in a lot of the family friendly and safest areas and kept a watchful eye over us the whole time, except for the few times that we were sent on our own. Right. But I think we had a friend who said, raise your expectations for Barcelona and lower them for Paris when we were planning this trip. And I feel like Barcelona met or exceeded every expectation that I had. Yeah, Barcelona was beautiful as a city. Adventures by Disney was amazing. And I know, it, yeah, Adventures by Disney was a big part of that, that we were treated so well yeah. the entire time we were in Barcelona. So basically we would, I think we'd go back to Barcelona in a heartbeat yes. just because we had such a wonderful time. Definitely. From, and would do yes. Adventures by Disney again in yes. a heartbeat. Yes. And would do Adventures by Disney paired with a cruise because that process was amazing. Yeah, I was going to say from the moment we stepped off the plane, there was a porter waiting for us to help with baggage. Then we had a driver, but and then we were well taken care of the whole time. And then on the last day, our guides got on the bus with us and took us to the port. Yeah. And walked us up to the concierge line and said, have fun. Yeah. So, and take a bottle of water before you go too. Right. Upgraded everybody's boarding group to five. Yes. No matter so what right, you were. Right after concierge. So everything about that was just outstanding. Highly, highly, highly recommend Adventures by Disney, pairing with a cruise. Barcelona was amazing. So with Adventures by Disney, it was like, what more can they possibly do? And then they kept doing more and more and more. Yes. So, and I know that was part of the reason we love Barcelona so much because we had a wonderful time with Adventures by Disney, but again, loved Barcelona. Yeah. And we were excited to be able to sail from Barcelona on our Disney cruise. Yes. So for the cruise, the biggest takeaway for this sailing, because the cruise was amazing as always. Disney cruises are always wonderful. This sailing is so jam-packed with activities, especially with the longer port days, that we are exhausted. Yeah. Um, and as far as the dining goes, we got back from our excursion almost every time around 6.15ish. So you would kind of be late or potentially even miss your early dining. And then the late dining on the sailing was pushed to 8.30. So we were just eating so late. We were basically eating and then going to bed a lot of the days. Yeah. Or rushing but, up to a party on the yes, deck. Yes, rushing up to one of the nighttime things on the deck. But I... I wouldn't have switched this to the early no. dining. It was, that was just a result of the excursions we were doing. If we did the half day excursions, we would have been fine in the early dinner. We would have been right. fine to do all the things, but doing what we wanted to do and just, we were in port sometimes for close to 12 hours. Yes, they were all, all the ports were, were 12 hour port days. So we wanted to spend our time wisely and enjoy the ports. So that took us off the Disney dream a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was just a lot of really long days, but we knew that going in. And I don't think we would change what we did. Mm -hmm. I think all the excursions for what we wanted to do was good to see it. I think we've talked before that we wouldn't necessarily do the Sorrento Pompeii again. We would just go to Sorrento. Basically, we had some issues with the guide. Yes and the way the guide operated the tour. And there were also some people on the tour who, because we branched off with a separate guide and the separate guide was getting really frustrated because there were some families who were just ignoring the group and doing what they wanted to do. And he was like, he was rightfully frustrated with that. Yes. So there was just a lot of weird energy with the guide and the extra guide in Pompeii. So I think we said we would not recommend the, we did the value package, Sorrento yes. and Pompeii, would not recommend that excursion, but our, we're glad that we did it. We're glad we saw it. Definitely. We would go back to Sorrento. If we were to do it again, like if we were gonna book the same cruise, I think we would just try to get to Sorrento mm -hmm. and we would just spend the day there and have a really nice time because we loved the time that we had in Sorrento. Yeah. And then after that was Rome, 
And Which we again, had, the tour was was good. It gave us gave us a a glimpse at a lot of the sites of Rome and places we wanted to see. Would do something different because now we've seen all that stuff. Would and recommend that though yes. the Imperial Rome, Imperial Ren and Renaissance, Renaissance Rome, Rome with St. Peter's Square adults only departure. That was what we did. I would recommend it. Our guide Sabina was fun, super nice. We had a really nice time. Mm -hmm. It was just super hot, super busy, and so much stuff was blocked off because Rome is having a great big celebration next year that we didn't know about. Yes. So we didn't fully get to experience all that Rome has to offer. I don't know that it would be top of our list to return to in Italy. No, I, I want to see other places in Italy. But I wouldn't be opposed to going back to Rome. Someday. Yeah. It felt like another big city. Um, it was similar to Paris. Similar to Paris, except around every corner was like, oh, this is like a ruin. Yes. So that was interesting. At least where we were in yes. the city. But really had a nice time in Rome. Just big, hot, long day. Very hot. And then the next port was, well, we went to Cinque Terre. Yes. We skipped the first port. Well, we didn't do an excursion that day. <laughs> yes. Skip Palermo. Palermo, the port was uh, kind of rough. Kind of felt like Cozumel, honestly. With it was a lot of people, people trying to yelling sell at stuff, you. Yelling. Yeah. Once we got out of the port area, we were okay. It was a pretty city. We did the theater and stuff. Would probably wouldn't change much about that day. If we were to go back to Palermo, I would put my blinders on to get past the screaming people. Yeah. And once I was out in the city, I would just go bakery to bakery and try a different canolo at every stop. Yes. And then I would go blinders back on, get back on the ship, and that would have been my perfect Palermo day if I were to go back to Palermo again. Yeah. Um, but then, now to the last port of... Cinque Terre. The port of Livorno, our excursion was Cinque Terre. Would definitely do that excursion again. Would recommend it. Would do it again. Motion sickness wise, I was Dramamine heavy and had my C-bands on and I survived. I do think it was a very false sense of security going there because going there was totally fine. Coming yeah. back was real rough. It was like going around town. Yeah. It was all over the place. And it was almost an hour on the boat each way. Yeah. So real rough hour coming back, but it went faster going back though. They were it booking did. it a little bit more. Yes. But Cinque Terre was beautiful. We had some great food, great pictures. It was just something out of a fairy tale yeah. to be able to go there and see it all in person. I loved Vernazza. That was the first mm -hmm. town. It was beautiful. That was the better picture spot, I think. Yeah. That and one then, felt like Luca. Yeah. And then second, Monterosso, I loved being able to get down to the water easily mm -hmm. because that was where we went down and we were able to touch the Mediterranean. Vernazza had water access too, but it started raining so we didn't go down there. Yeah. So. It was so close to what, where we needed to be in Monterosso and yeah. there was just a little set of stairs so we could just walk. Loved the food in Monterosso though. Yes. Sure. It was also incredibly pedestrian friendly in Cinque Terre. We felt safe. We had some rain, but we heard that other people just got absolutely drenched. In Florence and in Pisa. Florence and Pisa. So luckily for us, we were far enough away that we didn't have too much rain to deal with. And it was just a really great day. Yeah. So basically we did three excursions. Would not recommend the value package Pompeii and Sorrento. Would recommend Imperial and Renaissance Rome. But with, wouldn't do that one again. Right. But wouldn't do it again because we did it. But Cinque Terre would recommend, would do it again. But be mindful if you have motion sickness. Yeah. So that was, those were the ports. Yes. But then we had a lot of fun on board the cruise as well. Yes. Characters were so much fun. In their special outfits. That yes. was definitely a highlight for us to be able to meet the characters in unique outfits that you can't see anywhere else, even if sometimes they were a little like, why is Goofy gonna climb Scottish. a mountain? Why is he Scottish today? But it was very fun. Um, so that was one of the 
most exciting parts for me. Yes. It was also cool for as far as the pictures go that they did at least import like sunset photos on the deck with the islands in the background almost, almost every, every day. day. There was someone out there taking pictures. So that was really cool, really fun to, to get those pictures. And then as far as the shows go, Beauty and the Beast was lovely. Mm -hmm. um, Golden Mickey's was fun. Mm -hmm. I think I like other ones better than Golden Mickey's. I think Beauty and the Beast is my favorite of like the re retelling of the Disney stories. Um, and the Disney's Believe was good as always. Um, but I think my favorite show on board was Color Spin. Color Spin was everything and more. It was hilarious. Everyone was so tired though that it wasn't busy. Right. It was cold, they were handing out blankets, and it was late, and it was late in the run of the cruise. It was the last port day. So, when we were in Cinque Terre. Yes. But it was- At 10 p.m. Yeah. It was hilarious, it was so fun. I loved watching it. I wish it was on every single sailing that we've ever done because I would just watch it again and again because yeah. it brought me so much happiness. So much better than Pirate Night. Yeah. It was just super fun. Yeah. And it was exciting to see something different mm. and unique. But again, I think that was the favorite of the shows, which is a surprise because I never expect a the deck, deck party, party to be my favorite show. But that was another highlight for sure. We had fun in trivia. Mm -hmm. We met a lot of really wonderful people and got to spend time with really wonderful people. And just, we had a really wonderful time. <laughs> we were very, very tired, but we had a really nice time. It really was a great cruise. Um, and really, really great cast members on the sailing too. Yes. The photo, the photo pass people were outstanding yes. this time. Like, compared to the other sailings, this has been the most interactive the photo pass photographers have been. Um, which was great. Yes. Some of the character attendants were, were great, very helpful, very It fun. was just a lot of really nice people. I think maybe some of that was because we were bouncing off of the cast members in Disneyland Paris. True. That everybody on the cruise seemed really hands-on and friendly in comparison, but they, act they were. Everyone was super nice. And again, we just, I don't think we could have had a better time. No. I will say the biggest shocker to us, what we knew going into it, but still something to mention, is because this sailing started and ended within, and all the ports were in the EU, uh, European Union, the stores on the ship still do not open while, while you're in port, but you do have to pay the tax on everything value added tax it's like 21 percent, so it's a huge tax right. so something to keep in mind for european sailings but basically as far as shopping we scaled it back we only yes. did the stuff that we could not get elsewhere we wanted mediterranean exclusive things and that's pretty much all we got yeah on board because we have some other stuff coming up that won't have the tax on it. Right. So anything that we could wait on, we did. But with that in mind, we went to Amsterdam for one night. We had a nice time. We did a canal tour. We ate some food, Holland fries, shrimp waffle. Wine and, and cheese on board the canal tour. Wine and cheese on board the canal tour. And then we flew home yeah. with all of our stuff Yes. that we can now show you in the haul portion of this video. So this will be a very long video. As you can already see, we're already at like the halfway point. It's 20 something minutes in, but now- Thanks, to, thanks for sticking with us this long. Yes. Now to do our haul. So location by location. We didn't get a whole lot, but it seems like a whole lot. Yes. So let's get started. Yes. Let's start with Paris. 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 So starting with Disneyland Paris. Uh, I guess we can start with the free stuff. For our hotel, we got our room keys, which are kind of souvenir room keys. Our names and stuff are on the back, but with Minnie Mouse as a little sailor, Newport Bay Club, this was a magic pass. These were our keys to get in the room, tickets for the park, everything was on this card, which is nice. They don't have Magic Band over there, so this is kind of your all-in-one for in the Paris. Similar to the cruise. Yes, yeah, similar to the cruise. And then, not really a souvenir, but also had the photo pass card, 
um, that they would scan at the registers after the rides. A little more, an extra step compared to Walt Disney World because it's not automatic. You can't just tap somewhere right. to get your pictures. You have to go to a screen. Figure out your number. Find yourself, tell the cast member the number, and then they will add it to your pass. Yes. Um, we also wanted to get some buttons. Yes. So this one was a bit confusing. They don't have any anniversary or honeymoon buttons because we were celebrating our anniversary. So the cast member gave us buttons to celebrate the birth of our marriage. Yes. So we have birthday buttons that just say happy birthday, but I know in French it's bon, bon anniversaire. So sure, kind of anniversary. They understood. They just... The cast member was trying really hard to accommodate, but they just did not have any anniversary or honeymoon buttons. There were no love buttons that they could give us. Right. And then the other button we got was our first visit button. So we got those two. The weird thing was we saw some people's that said first visit, and then we saw these ones that say premier visit. So interesting that we there multiple languages for it. And yes. They also, compared to the buttons at Disney World, it's a safety pin that is flat to the back. Yes. So easier to pack because the pin can just Folds be down. pulled down. Folded down. So, yay. Yes. Got some first visit buttons and some birthday buttons. Um, with the kids meals at Disneyland Paris. Because you know I'm a kids meal connoisseur. They also, the kids meals in Paris are also well worth it because you get so much. You get an entree, a side, a drink, and a dessert, and a dessert for so, the cost. And I think it was like nine euros for most of the kids meals. Um, but the cups are like reusable cups. So they, they say it isn't in Paris 30th anniversary because the 30th was a couple of years ago now. So they have a very large supply of these cups, but it's Coke on the back. Um, but just a, a fun little souvenir. They hold uh, 250 milliliters. So, small cups, we got three to take home, but that was that, and that was helpful for packing too, coming home. Um, to put things in to protect them. To put things them. in for protection, yes. Um, sticking with kids' meals, from McDonald's, you got a toy. I got a toy. Which I think is just cardboard. I haven't opened it up and played with it yet, but yeah, it's in French. Yeah. It was, they gave you the option of toy or book. So, interesting that the toy option is still basically a book. Practically. But, um, and then as far as the Disneyland Paris itself souvenirs, I got some pins. So, I of course had to get a Disneyland Paris pin, and I'll show closer up. Uh, close up while you're talking. Close up while I'm talking. Um, but Disneyland Paris pin and a Walt Disney Studios pin. And then I also wanted to have a pin with the year on it. So I got the Disneyland Paris 2024 pin, which is very colorful, very fun. It even has Tinkerbell on the one side. And then had to get a pin for where we were staying. So got the Newport Bay Club pin. And then the last pin that I got was for probably my favorite ride, just because I love Haunted Mansion. I like seeing how different it was over there, but I got a Phantom Manor pin. The one thing I will say with all of these pins, um, let me pull up my price list. They're big. They are huge pins compared to the Disney World pins. And these four, keep them around. These four, so the Disneyland Paris pin, the 2024 pin, Newport Bay Club, and the Phantom Manor pin were all nine euros. Um, and then the Walt Disney Studios pin was 12 euros. So really not that bad comparatively with how big they are and with how the pins priced out on the cruise being a lot smaller, mm -hmm. um, which we'll get to that in a second. But that was my pin collection from Disneyland Paris. And then some other stuff that we got. We really wanted to get an ornament. But we have cats. Yes. And the ornaments were glass, big round globes. 
So we needed something a little more cat friendly. Yes. And packing friendly too. So to use as an ornament, we got this lovely little keychain. Yes. And it shows, this was their new collection with the Aristocats. Um, I like how it's the Eiffel Tower and it's just very kind of elegant looking. It's very Gold. cute. And since we're cat people, it has the three kittens, yeah. Marie Berlioz and Toulouse, who I wish that we could have seen in Paris, but they were not available for a meet and greet, at least not for us. Yes. But loved that. We wanted to get something from the Aristocats line and this was just the perfect thing. Yeah. And this was also nine euros. It seemed like nine euros was the trend for- It's the going rate. A lot of the souvenirs in Disneyland, Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris. Because the last thing that we got from Disneyland Paris that was nine euros as well. This was the thing that I very much wanted. Yes. A little magnet frame that we could put on the fridge, a picture from the trip. So it says Disneyland Paris with Mickey and it was nine euros and it made me happy. Yeah. And then from our day in Paris proper, got, like, got a couple souvenirs. Not so, too much. Not too much. The uh, perfume museum slash perfume making experience. Um, the museum is free, but the perfume uh, activity of making the, the perfume was 29 euros per person. And each person goes home with the little bottle of the perfume you make. I think this was 50 milliliters. I thought it was 15. 15? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. It's a little bottle. A little bottle. I was going to say, compared to that. I guess that's Compare it to the cup. I think it's 15 milliliters. But the perfume there was very expensive. Yes. So it's a good value because you get to make it yourself. You get to take it home. And it also came with a guided tour of the museum. Right. So we were able to kind of get a better understanding of what all was going on in the museum. What were we looking at? What were we seeing? And why was it important? Because our teacher for the perfume making part of the experience was also our guide around the museum to help us understand more about the history of perfume. Yes. And if you did the free museum tour, you do not get guided to her. No, you just walk around and can look at things. So that was nice. And I think that was, that was well worth it for 29 euro for experience plus a little souvenir to take home. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing we got was right around the corner from the uh, museum was the lint store mm -hmm. as far as like lint truffles go. And we really wanted to get ones that were specific to Paris or specific to France. So ask the um, employees there and they point out three of them to us. Three flavors. Three flavors. So we got one that was Sakura or Sakura, that's kind of raspberry. And then this one was cheesecake. And then the one that I'm probably most excited about is champagne. So three different flavors that they said were unique to um, France or at least Paris. And we ended up getting eight truffles all together, a um, couple of each kind. And the, all their pricing there was weight based. So for eight truffles, it was four euros and 75 cents. So not too bad. Overall, Paris souvenirs wise, we were very low yeah. price wise. Um, but that kind of did it for Paris. So next up is Barcelona. Barcelona. Okay. And then for Barcelona. Uh, as far as the Adventures by Disney side of things in Barcelona, so pre-cruise. Yes. Um, got quite a few things, so I don't know where to start. Well, we didn't get that much as far as like... No, a lot, a lot less... The grand scheme of things. ...number of things. Um, so one of the main goals for shopping in Barcelona was we wanted to bring some wine or something on board the cruise with us, mm -hmm. as well as take some home. So when we landed in Barcelona, the first like welcome reception with ABD had some mimosas with some fantastic cava, yes. which was local to Spain. Um, I don't know that it's the best cava in the world, no. but it was, we, we thought it. it was good. And it's also from one of our adventure guides hometown. Yeah. So that was another reason that that was special to us and why we wanted specifically this brand of cava. Right. 
So I went to a uh, El Corte Inglés, which is a couple, couple blocks away from our hotel. We found out that they had the wine, looked it up online ahead of time, so got some bottles. So we ended up getting two bottles of the, uh, I guess, Blue Reserve. But Perilot is the brand. Yes. Um, just the standard one. We got two of those. One we, of which... We drank on the cruise. Yes, one of which was on the cruise. And these were €7.83 each, which is insane. For a bottle of kava. Yes. I don't know the going rate of kava. True. I don't know that it's a fancy thing. Maybe it is. We saw some bottles that were around $30 and stuff. So True. You know. But we didn't get the expensive stuff. Yes. We got this one. We liked this one. Tried it the first day. And yeah. So we got two bottles of this one. As well as, because we found it at the store, so we have not tried this one before, but the same brand, but a rosé cava. Yes, and so something different. This one was a little bit more expensive, but this one was seven euros and 95 cents. So a couple cents more, not much. But that was our alcohol purchase for Barcelona. Yes. And then as far as the other purchase goes, to stick with the theme of an ornament, we a cat-friendly ornament. Cat-friendly ornament, because again, a lot of the ornaments that we were seeing were the glass Large, balls. breakable ornaments. So not just for cat purposes, but getting it Packing. home without having a break. So our purchase here was the little lizard from Park Well. And on the back, it is the symbol of Barcelona with the little like, kind of flowers. The rose. And rose, yes. And it has a bee. Yeah. Hanging down between the loop and the lizard for Barcelona. Yes. And so we can remember our visit to Barcelona and to Parkwell. Yes. This one was eight euros and fifty cents from the gift shop at Parkwell. Yes. Um, and then the rest of the stuff from Barcelona. We did not buy. We did not buy. It was all given to us from eventually by Disney. So for the pre flamenco show. Everybody was given these flowers to wear, whether it be in your hair. They're a claw clip. Yes, they are. They are claw clips that are just covered with the large uh, flowers. Large flowers. So whether you want to pour it on your shirt, put it in your hair, etc. Um, but that was a fun little souvenir that was relevant to the adventure. Um, I don't know that flamenco is typical in Barcelona proper, but it was part of our adventure in Barcelona. Yes. So, and then. At one point, we were talking about kind of the history of different things in Barcelona, and it talked about Chupa Chups. So Chupa Chups is a company that is making lollipops, kind of the equivalent to, I guess, Dum Dums over here would be, but... They have other things other than lollipops. Yes, they, that's true. But um, Salvador Dali designed the logo while he was in Barcelona. Um, so we got two little Chupa Chups lollipops on our adventure, which is fun. They passed them out on the bus. Yeah. We were like, put them in the purse, can't eat it right now. Yes. We've been eating too much good stuff. And then during the entire adventure, every day of an Adventure by Disney uh, trip, you get a pin of the day. An exclusive pin that you can't, you can't buy these no. out in the world. You can only get them. Right on adventures, so loaded all of mine on the lanyard. So I have, I'll, I'll put all these as I'm talking about them. So the first day was Goofy with uh, Bienvenidos. So this was our welcome day. Welcome dinner. Welcome dinner, etc. And then the second pin was Chip and Dale for uh, La Vida de Catalonia. And this was because most of this day was experiencing a lot of what Catalonia had to offer, specifically Montserrat. Montserrat. Um, so this was our Sagrada Familia and Montserrat day. And then the next pin was Mickey with El Gran Maestro. And this was, the, the pin shows him at Parkwell. The Catalonia pin shows the chipmunks at Montserrat. But Mickey is at Parkwell, and this was Parkwell and the Gothic Quarter day. And then the last pin that we got was for the adventure was Hasta Luego, and this was Disney, or not Disney, Goofy, uh, holding some bags that specifically say Spain, 
And this was more than like, see you real soon. Yeah, and see you later. See you later. It's not goodbye. It's see you later. Yeah. And we got that one as we were getting off the bus going to the cruise port. Yes. So like the last moment was that pin. And then the last pin that we received, which was special for us because we were celebrating our anniversary, we got an Adventures by Disney Celebrate pin. Um, very non-specific as far as location goes, but they gave us two of those. And just a really nice thing to do. They didn't have to do that. Right. Gave us a little card addressed to us and we'll celebrate and yeah, just a handwritten card from our adventure guides. With confetti inside. With, with confetti inside. Uh, but that was very fun, very thoughtful. And there were a couple couples that were doing. There were five couples celebrating and it was 40 years, 30 years, 10 years, two years, and then a honeymoon couple. Yes. So we weren't the we were, newest. We were not the newest. We were not the freshest marriage on that trip. Yes. And then the last gift from Adventures by Disney was given to us the evening after the flamenco show, um, going to the hotel for the last time, was a little postcard for Barcelona, and it says on the back, gracias por visitar Barcelona from Alyssa and Rafi, our adventure guides. And with this postcard, we got two little souvenirs, food souvenirs from Barcelona. So we have a thing of nougat. Handmade. Handmade nougat from Vicens or Vicens. But shows Barcelona, has the, the lizard from Parkwell in the front. Yes. Taxis, because we did ride in a taxi. Yep. Not with AVD, but in Barcelona. True. And then in addition to that, we got a little bottle of olive oil from Barcelona. Um, and one thing that we was very thoughtful of them is that the size is... Uh, Appro appropriate for carry-on luggage. Yes, it's a 100 milliliter bottle, so perfect size for a carry-on luggage. Um, so that was great. Everything was very well thought out for ABD from the start, so wouldn't expect anything other otherwise. Yes, and but, we were very thankful for the gifts we received too. Yes, and that wraps up Barcelona. So then the last part, which is the biggest part, is the, the cruise. cruise. So now on to the Disney Cruise. Okay, and now for the all the stuff that we acquired on the Disney Dream. So first off is what was waiting for us in the room yes. slash acquired with, from the room during the sailing. So first we have your last ever silver lanyard. Guess who's gold now, baby? Yes, you're now gold. So gotta treasure this one, your last ever silver one. And then I got my gold one. And then we also got the Happily Ever After buttons for Disney Cruise Line for celebrating our anniversary. We didn't have to celebrate the birth of our wedding again. Right. But very cute. Yes. And then we did not show it in the video, but we did get the same Castaway Club gifts. So the gold gift is a wet dry bag that says Castaway Club. And then the silver gift is a tote bag that is similar to the one on the Wish. We got this one for as well. But that was the stuff from day one waiting for us in the room. You're just gonna keep passing. Yeah, we gotta start a snack over there. Um, okay. As far as other stuff that we got in the room was a different, newer style of the pirate bandanas for pirate. That is now appropriately sized for an adult head. Yes, they are no longer tiny and they show Captain uh, Mickey and Captain Minnie in their pirate attire, but now it is the appropriate size for an adult head, as you said. So, got And we saw lots of people wearing them. Yes. There were a lot of pirate costumes on this cruise, lots of people dressed up, and a lot of people added those to their outfits. Yeah, definitely a lot more costumes, as you said. Yes. Like, People were into it, this cruise. Usually we see like shirts that's just like, this is my pirate night shirt, or like, yo ho. But this time was a lot more yes. full on costumes, especially for the men. Um, and then as far as our trivias go, yes. we got our two medals. So we each got a Pluto medal, 
as well as a Goofy medal. The Pluto was for the Disney food, and the Goofy was for Pixar, Pixar. trivia. So, gotta savor those. And also, we don't have either of these, so add them to our collection. I think we have Mickey and a generic one, maybe? I think so. But add those to the collection. And then the other thing that was unique for this cruise was the Facebook group associated with this cruise. I was made an admin for that, and I also organized all the fish extenders. So I had two families reach out to me and wanted to give us a little thank you. So very, very sweet. But one family from Spain wanted to give us a magnet from their hometown. So got a beautiful magnet from Granada, Spain. Kind of like a... Uh, you won't see my face. There you, go. there you go. But kind of like a stained glass looking magnet. Very pretty. And then the other one was a family from Australia that made this magnet. Just showcasing all of our ports and the date and everything. So again, very cute, very thoughtful. And Thank you. Yes, and thank you very much for the little thank you gift. As for what we purchased on board, didn't go too crazy. Like you said, wanted to keep it as stuff that we could not get otherwise. Right. So just got three things. First off is a Disney Dream of Europe pin, and this was $17.99. And then just as a reference, to compare the size and the price, this is the Disneyland Paris Phantom Manor pin, and this is the Disney Dream of Europe pin. This one was nine euros and this one was $18. So almost double with the, with the conversion, which is kind of insane. But definitely wanted to get a Europe specific pin. Mm -hmm. And I like the dream of Europe because it really was like a dream come true. And then had to add to my collection and get the, a pin for the Disney dream uh, just in general. And this one was $12.99. So a little bit cheaper, but this was also the cheapest price of the pins on board. So it seems to be a little bit more expensive than what they used to be. And then the last thing that we got was an ornament. And this one's an actual ornament rather than a keychain. Have to watch it around the cats. Yes. But it is the same logo as the pin. So it says Dream of Europe with Mickey and Minnie. And this one's a bit weird. So it is marked as $26.99 but it was on sale for 15. We were like, why? I don't know. And then we looked closer and saw that it says 2023 on it. Yes, behind Minnie it says 23, behind Mickey it says the 20. So it appears to be a misprint because this is the logo of this year since it, it matches the pins. Yeah, it doesn't match the merch they had for last year. So just a slight oopsie, but you can't see unless you're really looking for it behind many that it's a 23 instead of a 24. Right. So lovely ornament for $15. So can't complain. And that was our shopping on board. Mm -hmm. um, Time for DVC. DVC stuff. Yes. The most exciting thing we got probably was the hats. Yes. They Two are... hats, Disney Vacation Club, and on the back it says member. Yeah. Ooh. Very excited for those to wear we've those been, in the future. We've been hoping for the hats as a gift for a wee bit, so it was very exciting to see that. We also received lanyards, and the lanyards have a new design this time. Since I feel our like last they've sailing. changed three times since we yeah. started doing this. So very cute. It has like Disney food, balloons. They have a tiara, and it says Disney Vacation Club member on it. Yeah. So very fun. We also received. The perfect pair, Hulu Disney Plus pins. Ooh. Kind of random, but sure. And then DVC luggage tags, a classic, nice to have, especially if we had bought an extra suitcase or needed it. Luckily, we did not. Very then true. we got this on the door, Peruge, Disney Vacation Club member, and a lithograph for the Disneyland Hotel Villas. Yeah. Very cute. For kind of a quick miscellaneous thing, we also did the Remy's Ratatouille scavenger hunt. So brought home our sheet and then our prize of the Ratatouille recipe, which on the back says anyone can cook. Culinary series. 
Yes. So maybe you could have gone to Anyone Can Cook and gotten it without the work of running all over the cruise ship. Very true. But we had a nice time on the scavenger hunt, so that was fun. Yeah. And then, should we do this stuff or should we do that stuff? I mean, you already talked about how you were the admin of the group, so That's maybe true. we should go ahead and talk about the group. For the fish extenders, we did a candy exchange. Yes, we didn't want to get too much stuff, and we figured the stuff that we did get, we wanted it to be consumable, so. Well, basically we knew space was gonna be limited. Yes. So if people spoiled us too much, then we knew we could eat a few things and- To make space. To make space in our luggage. So some stuff that we received didn't make it home because we already ate it, so thank you for those items. But from folks in our group from California, we got a nice Ghirardelli assortment mm -hmm. and a nice tin. So that was very thoughtful. And local to their area too. Yes, from California. From a family in the UK, we got Chupa Chups bubble gum, drumstick squashies, some Cadbury dairy milk buttons, and for each of us, a flump. <laughs> Flumps plural. Yes. But very thoughtful, very fun. We're excited to try that. Definitely excited to try all this candy from yes. International. And, and we were very, very spoiled by our friends from Barcelona. Oh. See, I'm going for more because we were that spoiled. We have some caramel truffle nougat. Very exciting. And some toasted egg yolk nougat. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Then we have Monquitos. We have pedazetas, palotes, lacasitos, juecitos, like lots of them. I have a pile. And then, because that wasn't enough, I'm making a mess. A can, not can, a lovely tin, souvenir tin from Barcelona of cookies. Yeah, with some familia on the front. Yes, very cute. We're very thankful and we're very excited to yes. try these treats from our friends. Cannot wait to dig in. Okay, and then the last purchases we made were in port. And we didn't get a whole lot in the ports. We didn't get anything in Palermo, and we didn't get anything in Rome, and we didn't get anything in Amsterdam, not a, not a port, but um, we did get a little something in Naples port and a little something in Livorno's port. So for Naples, specifically in Sorrento, we got some limoncello. Yes. And associated in this. So got a large bottle of limoncello. This is a 700 milliliter bottle. This was $16. 16 euros. 16 euros, I'm sorry. Um, as well as a cream limoncello that is a... Or Meloncello. Meloncello. So it's orange melon, aka cantaloupe. We have no idea that cantaloupe was so popular in Italy. So when we asked at this shop what was their favorite, this is what we were pointed to. And people coming into the shop were like, get this, this is, this is my favorite. My favorite. Um, and it was interesting to go to the shop because the outside just said like, Lemoncello factory. Um, and they said that they make a batch every, every week. week. And that was just in the back of their shop. And it was, we tried several samples of Lemoncello from people who were here, try it, try it, try it. And this was the best one. Yes, by far. Sapori and Colori. Mm -hmm. Sorrento was the brand. And they do have a an online store. Online store. We also, from the same place, yes. got these, Bon Bon a Limoncello. Which these are fantastic. Real good. Yeah. They're basically kind of like a wafer cookie that's. Like a white chocolate. Right, yeah. Like a, a cookie that's coated in white chocolate and then the middle of the cookie is hollowed out and filled with limoncello. So it just kind of bursts in your mouth. It is amazing. Um, yes. Same brand, same company that makes them. The this was six euros fifty cents. The small bottle of the uh, cantaloupe melon liqueur melon cream liqueur was nine euro, and the big bottle was sixteen euro. So this was kind of our biggest yes. purchase in Italy, yes. pretty much. But all fantastic. Cannot wait to dig in. Um, 
You can also buy all of their stuff online, online. and they will ship. And they ship. It is expensive to ship, but maybe it's worth it. This stuff is really good, so it might be it might be worth it. Um, and then the other thing that we got from our port was in Cinque Terre. Yeah. After our fantastic and probably our favorite meal of the pesto pastas, we had to get some pesto from Locally made. the region. So got a jar of pesto. It is a 180 gram jar of pesto, and this was seven euro. But it was so good, so I hope it is the same thing that we had or close yes. to it, because that was amazing. That meal was fun. The chef came out to talk to us, it was super nice. He got done for the day, like when we were finishing up and waved bye to us. Yeah, he was like fixing so, his bike or something. Yeah, so. so it was just a super fun experience and I'm glad we could bring home some pesto to remember that day. Yeah, but that kind of wraps up all of our haul from our Europe trip. I know, we didn't go too crazy. No, we really didn't. Of the stuff that we spent, we figured out it was probably right under $200 total for what we what we actually spent. Um, so not too bad. Yes. And a lot of really fun memories. <laughs> a lot of good things to eat. So I'm excited to dig into what we have and just relive those memories from Europe. Yeah, for sure. Because we have some trips coming up, not to Europe, but we'll keep you posted. I guess that's true is we did get one more thing on board and that was a placeholder for a cruise so that has already been booked yes but we're not going to tell you what it is coming up in the future yes it's actually quite a while quite, quite a ways away um but have a few more trips before then as well yes and then adventures by disney also has a promotion for a bounce back offer mm -hmm. um so if you book an, a, another Adventures by Disney trip within 45 days of finishing your first adventure, you get so much off depending on the type of adventure, ranging from 150 for the escapes up to like 500 for the fancy expedition cruises. But all the land ones are like 250 off per person. So stuff another, to think about. Yeah, we definitely want to do ABD again in the future. I'm a nerd who loves Anne of Green Gables. So I would love to do their adventure in Canada someday, mm -hmm. but we'll see. We got to keep doing laundry and finish out all the unpacking before we start planning too much. Yes, but overall a lovely trip to Europe, met some lovely people. Yes, we were very lucky and just, it was a wonderful time. Yes. It was our dream of Europe and the dream came true. For sure. And now we're awake, we're home, we have lots of stuff to eat and lots of laundry to do, so. Yes, so that will do it for today's video. This was a long one, so if you hung in there with us, thank you. Yes, um, and I hope you enjoyed our Europe series. Yes, very true. So that will do it for today and for our whole Europe series. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. See you real soon.